Hi guys, welcome to the new chapter that is structure of atom. Now in this chapter, we are going to discuss about these topics. And today we will discuss about the discovery of subatomic particles. Now, in this chapter, we are going to discuss about different models of atom. You know, Thomson said the atom looks like a plum pudding or it can be compared with a watermelon. Then came Rutherford, he gave the Rutherford model, then the Bohr model, then the quantum mechanical model. So there was a revolutionary change in the model of atoms that we are going to discuss. And the previous lecture or the previous chapter, we studied about the Dalton's atomic theory in which Dalton said that atom cannot be subdivided into the other particles. But atom can be subdivided into electrons, protons and neutrons. And we have to know then how these electrons, neutrons and protons were discovered. Let's start with the discovery of electron. Now let's discuss about the discovery of electron. Cathode ray experiment. Now student, in 1834, when Michael Faraday gave his laws of electrolysis, now everybody was thinking that whether all the matter that is solid, liquid and gas can conduct electricity or not. After a few years, that is 1859, Julius Prucker proved that gas can conduct electricity. Now, as everybody was thinking that gas is an insulator, but gas is a conductor, there is a condition and that condition is the voltage should be very very high and the pressure of the gas should be very very low. So, by the cathode ray experiment, he explained this that gas can conduct electricity. So, what was the setup of that particular experiment? Let us understand. So, he took an evacuated tube. Evacuated means it was vacuum in that particular tube. Since vacuum is not possible, we can say that the pressure of the gas was very, very low. So, if the pressure of the gas was very, very low, it is about 10 to the power minus 4 atmosphere. Voltage was very high. It was 10,000 volt and the negative terminal was cathode and the positive terminal was anode. So, this is an evacuated tube. Pressure is very low. Voltage is very, very high. Now, electron start moving from cathode to anode. So, electrons originate from cathode, right? And if we see, how does this work? It actually work like this. Now, you can clearly see from here, this is the cathode and electrons are moving from cathode to anode and you can clearly see the glass wall of the tube is becoming fluorescent. It is becoming colored. So, color is coming out. It means that something is striking there inside and Plucker wanted to know actually what is that thing. So, by his observation, we will come to know that what is actually cathode rays are and what is the actual significance of cathode rays. So, let us discuss about the properties of cathode rays which will help us to understand more about them. So, the first property was Cathode rays consist of material particles. Now, if they consist of the material particle, they will have the mass. And if they will have the mass, then while they are moving with the velocity, they will have the momentum also. And momentum can be shifted. So, this was indicated by the fact that a light pedal wheel, it's like a fan. And in the path of cathode rays, start rotating. So, what he want to say is, you can clearly see in this 
picture that these are the cathode rays coming from the negative terminal and this is the pedal wheel and uh, the pedal wheel now it gets start rotating and this pedal wheel is rotating here right so in this way you can say that definitely cathode rays are composed of some material some matter and that has some mass that's why momentum has been shifted so that pedal wheel is rotating let's talk about its second property 